Fellas. After playing RuneScape for so long, I sort of feel like I forget about some items that have become a necessity in my day-to-day -day in Gilinor. But today, I want to detail some important items you should get to make your time much better. First, let's talk about the Herb Sack. This bad boy is great and makes your time doing Slayer much more profitable. It can hold up to 30 of each grimy herb type for a total of 420. Weed. The herb sack can be set to open so that when you pick up a herb it will automatically be stored in the sack. And boy is this great, because if you get something like a Spectre's Task, you'll be filling this thing up real quick. You can get the herb sack from a Slayer Master for 750 Slayer points, which is quite steep, but I'd recommend you actually get it from Tithe Farm. This was recently added and costs 250 points. This would be my preferred way to get it, and it's a great way to get some farming XP while getting a really good quality of life item. Another great item is the Rune Pouch. The Rune Pouch is really good. Being able to take three different types of rune in one inventory space is great quality of life. It doesn't make magic hit harder or more accurate, but it does let you bring two extra prey pots or two extra pieces of food, which might not sound like much, but after a thousand trips, 2000 extra prey pots sounds really nice, doesn't it? For a while, this was only obtainable for Slayer points, 750 to be exact. Again, 750 points is a lot for most people. And since you wanna get this item as soon as possible, it's not exactly ideal. The good news is, you can get this item for 75 last man standing points, so if you're good at PvP, or even just into PvP, this is a great option. But alongside this, they've actually now basically made this item tradable. You can buy a rune pouch note for 3 million GP, and if you've got the money lying around, I'd really recommend you take this route. You can even make the rune pouch even better by getting a thread of Eladinus from the Tombs of a Masket, which can be obtained from an entry mode, so it's doable for most people. But starting out, a regular rune pouch will do you a world of good. For the farming fans out there, these little fellas are incredibly useful for your farm run. If you didn't already know, these give you an increased yield of 10% from all herb, allotment, grape, bushes, hops, and limpwort patches. It doesn't work for all flowers, but you'll definitely only want them for limpworts anyway. These are incredibly powerful for your herb run. You can get these from Fairy Tale Part 1, which all accounts should have done, unless you're a skiller, but even peers can get this because you don't need to complete the quest to get them. The second quest in this quest line is what gives you access to fairy rings, so if you haven't done it already, you should definitely look into this. The additional 10% makes your herb run 10% more profit, so I highly recommend it. Next is the Fighter Torso. This bad boy is pretty great. It can be obtained from the Barbarian Assault minigame, requiring 300 points in all four rolls, as well as one queen kill. This bad boy only has a 40 defense requirement to equip, yet it offers you the same strength bonus as a Bando's chestplate. Of course, it's not as defensive as a BCP, but using a protection prayer negates that stat benefit in a lot of scenarios. In my opinion, this is a must-have item while you're building your bank up to be able to afford those task sets and plate body, so if you don't have it already, get on it. Along the lines of minigame rewards, we also need to talk about Void Armor. Void Armor is really good, especially early on. Void offers you a 10% buff to melee damage and accuracy with the melee helm, 10% to range damage and accuracy with the range helm, and a whopping 45% increase to magic accuracy with the mage helm. To get this benefit, you will need the full set, being the top, the robe bottoms, and the gloves alongside the helmet. But this is a great set for a lot of scenarios before you have Bandos, Arma, or Ancestral. This set can be obtained from the Pest Control minigame. Each helmet will cost you 200 points, the top and bottoms being 250, and the gloves being 150. This is one of those sets that you will see a lot of benefit for the time committed, and there are definitely scenarios you'll want this set for. Damn, more minigame items. Would you look at that? Unlike most skilling outfits, the remnants of the eye don't actually give you additional XP. They give you additional runes. The full set offers you 60% additional runes, which means 60% more GP for you. It seems like a no-brainer, but if you're looking at your account and thinking about how much rune crafting XP you have left to do, be it for a quest cape, the diary cape, or even maxing, you should really get this set to make yourself that extra GP along the way. 
This set can be obtained from Gardens of the Rift, which will give you a great head start on your runecrafting training anyway. And following up with more runecrafting items, I also want to recommend you get every essence pouch that you can. All of these pouches hold a different amount of essence, the small pouch requiring level 1 and holding 3, with the giant pouch requiring level 75 and holding 12. By having all of them up to giant, you're essentially able to bring 30 extra pure essence per trip to the altar. This is huge as it lets you do more than two full inventories of runes in one trip, therefore increasing your XP every trip. These pouches can also be upgraded to the Colossal Pouch by obtaining an Abyssal Needle as a rare drop from Gardens of the Rift. If you are lucky enough to pull this needle, you'll now be able to hold up to 40 Essence in one pouch, furthering your XP and profit per trip. Another skilling item that lets you hold more items per trip is the fish barrel. This fella does exactly what it sounds like it does. It's a barrel that holds fish, 28 to be exact. You're able to set this to open so it automatically holds the fish as you catch them, filling up your inventory afterwards. In combination with the menu entry swapper plugin, you can also make it a one-click deposit to any bank, so it basically adds no time to your trip, aside from your time spent fishing, that is. This is an amazing quality of life item that can be obtained from Temporos at a rate of 1 in 400. This one is definitely worth your while, especially if you're really into AFK. I have a question. When you do Slayer, do you pick up the bones and bury them? Do you pick up the ashes and scatter them? Well, what if I told you there was an item that automatically did it for you? The Bone Crusher and the Ash Sanctifier actually do exactly this. Starting with the Bone Crusher. To get this, you need to do the Mauritania Hard Diary. I know this is a steep requirement, but I really think you'll want to get this diary done eventually, so it is worth your while to pick this item up as you go. The Hard Diary will let the Bone Crusher give you 50% of the normal XP you would for burying them. But hey, 50% is better than 0% from letting them despawn on the floor. But with the Elite Diary, it actually offers you 100% of XP you would get for burying them. The Bone Crusher also works in the Catacombs of Karend and will give you the Prayer Restoration effect, so it's great for AFKing down there. The only drawback for this is that you do need to charge it with Ecto Tokens. But since you've already completed the Diary for this, you can claim free crushed bones and buckets of slime from Robin every day and you'll be good to go. The Ash Sanctifier, on the other hand, is very similar and works the exact same except for Ashes. This item is obtained from completing the hard tier of the Karend and Kebos Diary, and this one can be charged with Death Runes at the cost of one Death Rune to 10 charges, so it's great bang for your buck. This one will also scale up with the Elite Diary, but unfortunately, this one does not work in the Catacombs for whatever reason. And the last item I want to talk about today is the Salve Amulet, the EI version to be specific. The South Amulet itself is good, but once enchanted, with the completion of the layer of Tarn Razalore mini quest, it can be imbued at the Nightmare Zone, the PvP Arena, or Soul Wars. And once imbued, this item not only has a 20% boost to attack and strength against undead monsters, but also a 20% accuracy and damage boost to ranged and magic. This amulet can be used against a lot of monsters. Like, I mean a lot. There is a big list that this works on. But the most important ones are Shades, Revenants, Bloat at TOB, Vorkath, Bedion, and his Hellhound minions. Unfortunately, this amulet does not stack with a Slayer Helmet. But in many cases, it can replace a Slayer Helmet and basically acts as one even when you're not on task. There are so many items in this game that I'd love to recommend you get, but that's all I've got for now. Thank you to my channel members, DTech, Dino, and Snacks. I appreciate your continued support and congratulations on your yellow party hat. I've talked about a bunch more items I think you should get in my account progression videos, which you should now be seeing on screen. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. I've got nothing left to say, so I'll see you in the next one.